Red Chaos The Strict Order is one of the most featured complete upcoming RTS games with fast-paced modern unit combat and base-building gameplay, which is crowned with super weapons and commander powers. The talented indie developers at SquareCut Games allowed us a full preview with a demo of its skirmish and multiplayer featuring two evenly matched factions, Iron Hand and Resistance, which both feature infantry, vehicles and air units along with lots of defensive and offensive base building options. I'll do it for the government. In the future, we can expect to play the main campaign and its single-player story about the lives of the people who managed to survive an apocalyptic world war and developers plan to have briefings before each mission with different characters. As for the multiplayer aspect, there will be PvP with leaderboards for up to 3v3 matches on many different maps and possibly a third faction, depending of course on how successful the game is. Skirmish with AI bots of varying skill levels and several customization options is already available and it is the mode I have playtested most often, even getting butthurt by the AI more times than I am comfortable admitting before I figured out how to best defeat him. Compared to something like Global Conflagration and its capture points income, which I showcased previously, Red Chaos uses a more traditional system of collecting resources from stockpiles by harvesters, which drop them off at a refinery. A basic, rather old school system, which you could see in 9 bit armies as well, for example. Where it is similar to Global Conflagration is how you can only construct new buildings on selected tiles, which expand around your new buildings. You can also use a special building just for extending this build range and it is actually a required building to unlock the refinery when you start a new match. In this game, however, you can construct your HQ but only as long as the original one is still standing, which means if you don't build a spare and lose the one you started with, no more main base building for you. I found this to be a rather strange design decision and the developers might change this in the future. Two other ways to earn money in Red Chaos are capturing oil rigs and constructing passive revenue generating buildings. Oil rigs are spread around the map and require you to send an engineer to capture them, meaning they can change hands numerous times during a match. As for generators and factories, which is how the passive buildings are named depending on which faction you choose, they are constructed inside your base and give you a steady passive income, but only after you have unlocked them by teching up. Red Chaos developers have gone with a few more old school systems when designing this game, while at the same time throwing out several ones you might have expected to see. In their place, they have added some more modern elements, and so far, I think this mix of the old and the new is working out well for the gameplay. So let me show off and tell you about these, while in case you do not like what you see so far, you can find other upcoming RTS games I have showcased on the playlist linked up here on the right and in the description below. As you have noticed by now, the building part of Red Chaos is designed with no builder unit but a build bar, which is organized by type. Base buildings, defensive buildings which include walls, infantry units, vehicles and air units being the last group which is separate when you play the Iron Hands faction. On this UI element you won't find a power bar as that is one element that has been removed from the gameplay. I must admit I didn't really miss it while playing but on the other hand not being able to slow down my opponent's production by snapping his power production does make the game one tactic short. The top three icons on the UI are not exactly the same for both factions and are actually missing one, Repair, which is actually in the game but over to the left of the screen as a special command power with a radius and cooldown instead of a general function. So you can't use it on any building whenever you want but only as an area of effect power with the plus side being that it can repair units too but at a cost of 1000. The other three buttons back at the right side of the UI also have some that cost money, like the scouting option both factions have available. 
The other hand uses a satellite to pierce the fog of war, while the resistance faction uses a low-tech animal solution, a hawk. You can also sell buildings using the corresponding button and ping spots on the minimap for your allies. The super weapons are another old school element, as the Iron Hands get to use an orbital laser called the Destruction Wave. Once they both construct the appropriate tech building and pay to unlock this power. That is correct. There is no special building for super weapons which is this game's twist on that mechanic. The other faction, the Resistance, has a tactical nuke super weapon, while both factions are able to unlock a few other powers like a triple bombardment strike or a demo charge drop. All of these have their own cooldowns but do not cost anything to use, just to unlock. The destructive power on vehicles and buildings is great, but they all have a minimal firing delay, meaning you have to be careful what and when you target. When it comes to recruiting units, the barracks is present in both factions, as are the regular gun and rocket infantry units, while where the factions differ is the sniper unit in the resistance faction and the highly mobile robot scout in the Iron Hands faction. That one can even transform and go from a land unit to become an air unit. Vehicles are similarly mirrored for some types, with both factions having a fast lightly armored vehicle with a gun a bus-like transport, a tank and a long-range artillery unit. On the more unique side, the Resistance has the explosive flying drone and equally explosive truck. The higher variety of land vehicles for the Resistance faction is balanced out by the better air power choices of the Iron Hand faction, because there you can train a specialized anti-air unit, a specialized bomber and an all-around jet helicopter hybrid. Most of these units have one ability they can use to boost their defensive or offensive capabilities for a short time, along with some that have an auto-repair ability. For example, infantry can turn on a shield to survive a bit longer under fire, light vehicles can extend their attack range, some air units can temporarily increase their damage and so forth. These abilities are not over the top and they have a cooldown so don't expect them to turn the tide of a battle, just offset the balance a bit to give you an edge. You can also see the combat uses and strengths of each of these units before you recruit them in the build menu, when hovering your mouse over them. The UI icons will show you what type of enemies that unit can attack and how much damage it will inflict on them. This is a much better way of informing your players of what each unit can do compared to how in Global Conflagration you have to hunt down such info in their Discord server on an Excel spreadsheet. One more feature I really like in Red Chaos is this whole command bar down on the bottom right of the user interface. Once you click on it and expand it, you find many useful commands for controlling units. You can match their speed so the whole unit formation travels at the speed of the slowest unit. If you have multiple production buildings, you can spread the recruitment of units across all of them. You can also jump your camera between units of the same type urgently spread out units if targeted by something and many more useful things. The upgrades for units which you can buy at tech buildings are one part of Red Chaos that is still too generic in my book. Having the ability to pay for 20% more speed of a unit is not very imaginative and that is just one example of many. This is one part of the game I hope the devs will spend more time on and make it much better in the future. They have already improved the unit abilities to how more unique they are now and I think they do plan to do the same for these upgrades in the future versions of the game. Overall, I like this game very much, especially the punchy music, and see a bright future for it on Steam and in your hands as RTS fans, as long as the campaign gameplay delivers and the multiplayer aspect is ironed out. There is no release date on the horizon for Red Chaos, so for more already playable games, check out the cards on the screen. Thank you for watching and happy gaming!